All right, well, let's have a look at the situation of investing money by regular amounts. Introduce this term called an annuity. An annuity is a compound interest investment, and so payments are made or received on a regular basis uh, for a fixed amount of time. Now, there's two types of annuities. There's an ordinary annuity, and that's where we deposit the same amount at the end of the compounding period. Uh, so an example of that would be a loan. And an annuity due is when you deposit the amount at the beginning of the compounding period. Uh, so that means something like a superannuation fund. So investments tend to be annuity dues, whereas uh, loans uh, tend to be ordinary annuities. Future value. The future value of an investment is the total value of the investment at the end of the term, whereas present value is the single amount. So instead of continually placing the same amount in every particular month or whatever the time period is, if you were just to put one lump sum in and you wanted to get the exact same amount of money, then the present value is that single amount that you would invest. Now, there is actually a financial product known as an annuity. So it is a type of annuity, but it's not the only type. It's just unfortunate that they use the name annuity. So don't confuse what we're doing with that financial product. All right, so let's have a look at annuity due. And we'll do it by looking at some HSC questions. So here's one from 2002. Um, so a superannuation fund, 8.75% per annum it's going to pay. And uh, so Stephanie decides to invest $5,000 and it's an annuity due. So we invested at the beginning of each year. So what will the amount be when she eventually retires uh, 20 years later? Okay, well, that first amount she invested has been invested for 21 years. So using our compound interest formula, that'll be 5,000 times 1.0875 to the power of 21. In 12 months' time, she's going to put another $5,000 in, but it's only going to be in there for 20 years. So it will grow to be a 5,000, 1.0875 to the power of 20. Then the next year, she puts another amount in, but that's only in there for 19 years. And she keeps doing that till eventually, there's 12 months to go, she puts her last $5,000 in, and it'll be in there for one year. So the total value would be all of those added together. Well, we've basically got a geometric series there. My first term is actually the last one that I've written down, 5,000, 1.0875. The ratio is 1.0875, and we've got 21 terms there. So basically, we want to now find the sum of 21 terms. So using our formula, a bit of calculator work from there, and we get our final amount. So a touch over $299,000. Now, this next part wasn't actually in the HSC. I've just added it here. What if we wanted to find a particular year? Uh, so we want to know, when did we exceed $200,000 for the first time? How long did that take? So I write out my series again, but this time I don't know how many years. So I don't know how long that first investment is. I know the last investment will be in there for one year. The second last one will be in there for two years and so on and so on. But I don't know how many years that first one is. So I'll just say it's in there for N years. So it's sum to N. We want to know when is that sum to N greater than 200,000. Okay, using our formula, it's an interesting little inequality to solve. But let's do it. We want to make N the subject. So if I get rid of all those, so I'll multiply over, I now have 1.0875 to the power of n minus 1 is greater than 280 on 87. Move the 1 over. Now I'm going to need to use my log laws, bring the n out the front, divide by the log of 1.0875, put that into our calculator. So n is greater than 17.1. We're looking for whole numbers here. So n equals 18 would be the first one bigger than 17.1. So 2021 would be the first time the fund exceeds $200,000. Well, how about this one? I want to know how much I put in each year. I want to retire on 31st of December, and I want a million dollars. So it's the same series, 
This time I don't know the principle. I know the first one's going to be in there for 18 years, the next one for 17, and so on and so on. So again, it, it's just a geometric series. We're saying when is the sum to 18 equal to a million? So another equation to solve. We want to make P the subject. Bit of calculator work from here, but there we go. If we wanted to get a million dollars, we'd have to invest each year almost $23,000. So future value. Well, the future value is all of the terms added together. So that's basically what we just did. We found the future value of the investments. Here's a formula. Or well, mind you, we usually do all these things from scratch. But if we want to create a formula for future value, it would be PR, R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. P is the principal. Interest rate, 1 plus the interest rate. N is the time periods. All right, so if she could afford it, how much money could she save by just making one investment and still have the same future value in 21 years' time? In other words, we now want to find out what the present value of this investment would be. So one investment, it's in there for 21 years, but we want it to equal the same amount, 299,604.86. Or we'll divide by 1.0875 to the power of 21, the present value would be $54,467.64. If I was to invest that now, do nothing else, come back in 21 years' time, I would have the same amount. Now, the actual investment, by doing it each year, remember we put in $5,000 for 21 years, so I actually ended up putting in $105,000. So how much would I save if I did it that way? Well, $50,000, well, $50,500. It's quite a bit, if I could afford to do it. That's the present value of an annuity due to create a formula for that then. So what we said was present value times R to the power of N would equal the future value. So if I divided by uh, the R to the power of N, I'd have a formula that I could use for present value. Okay. Well, sometimes they give us a, a table of values rather than having to calculate this out each time. We can just read off the table. Uh, so Tim and Janine are offered uh, interest of 6% for four years. Tim's investing $1,500 each quarter, compounded quarterly. Whereas Janine, she decides, no, no, I'm going to do $500 every month, compounded monthly. So who's going to get the most interest? So 6% per annum for Tim is 1.5% per quarter. So the value I'm looking for is there, 17.9324. 1.5% and it would be 16 quarters. Times that by the $1,500, because that table of values is for $1. Well, we uh, invested $1,500 here. So I get 26898 as the future value. Janine, she did 6% per annum. That would be half a percent per month but it would be 48 months. So we that would get us 54.0978 reading off as a table per dollar. But she's investing $500 each month. So we'd end up with 27,000. So Janine gets more. Tim's interest is 2,898. So the amount he ended up receiving minus all those payments he made. Janine, $3,000. So she ended up, it wasn't a lot, but $150.30 more than Tim. Okay, let's have a look at these few from 14C.